We're going to set this panel up a little bit differently. You've noticed we've gotten rid of the table. That's the traditional uh, panel format. Uh, we want to make this a little more interactive. Plus, all of these guys on the panel have lots of experience and are also very energetic. So I'm anticipating them to be standing up. Hopefully no fist fights will break out in the process of the discussion. But what we're going to do is we're going to break down the panel into basically three fundamental topics. One is we're talk about the creative side. How do you need to rethink about the creative when you think about 3D? Then we're going to talk about the production. What are the things you have to consider in the production side of producing 3D films? And then last, we'll talk about the distribution. And, in, and then interlaced throughout, we will actually have each of the panel members have brought their 3D clips to kind of talk through and show what they're doing and, some, and give you real world examples. So everybody here should have 3D glasses, right? So everybody, right? OK. The clips that we're going to show through the main portion of the panel will be visible on the TVs on either side here. At the end, we'll show you the clips running on Pluribus or Project Pluribus, which is an HP technology that we're doing research and development on. Um, but during the actual uh, early part of the panels, the, the clips will actually be shown on the TVs. And uh, you can probably watch for us when we start to put our glasses on, you know a clip is about ready to play. Okay? With that, what I want to do is I'm going to ask each of the panel members to just do a brief, brief introduction about their name, their title, role, and uh, maybe 30 seconds on Y3D for them. So, Ken. Uh, Ken Venturi. I'm with uh, National Cinemedia, or NCM Media Networks. Uh, we are the largest uh, small D digital network out there. Uh, we produce uh, the pre-show first look that runs in front of uh, quite a, a large majority of the box office. And uh, we are imminently uh, looking at 3D opportunities for the advertising space. Uh, Phil McNally. And are I'm one. <laughs> Phil McNally, I'm the stereoscopic supervisor at DreamWorks Animation, which basically means all of our movies are, you know, 3D going forward, and so I'm overviewing the 3D-ness of each of those movies. 3D-ness, is that yeah. a real word? Who knows? The stereoscopicness. <laughs> so, uh, plenty of work to do. Hi, uh, my name is Buzz Hayes. Uh, until very recently, I, I was a producer at Sony Imageworks. I've produced a lot of 3D pictures. Uh, did Monster House, Open Season, Beowulf, G-Force. Been involved with uh, pipelines of all the other pictures. We've done eight films so far in 3D at Imageworks. Uh, but most recently, I'm now the senior vice president of the Sony 3D Technology Center, which is a place where everyone can come and learn all things about 3D. Hi, I'm Steve Helmuth. I'm in charge of uh, technology at the NBA, so I'm in charge of information technology, uh, broadcast, operations, engineering. What it means is uh, I'm responsible for the global uh, distribution of our content via satellite streaming, and in this case, 3D. So I'll share my uh, 3D experiences with you. Uh, my name is Mark Lewis. I have a, a company called Radio Pictures, which is based in Mullumbimby, New South Wales, Australia. I'm an independent uh, filmmaker, and I have a, a 3D film uh, screening here at the Sundance Film Festival. In the premiere section, it's called Cane Toads, The Conquest. And the reason I chose 3D was because I, I liked it. <laughs> uh, my name's Bruce Hendricks. By <laughs> night, I moonlight as a director, and I made two 3D movies. By day, I'm president of production at Disney Studios, where I oversaw the production of uh, several 3D movies, G-Force, Tron 2.0, which comes out later this year, and Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, which comes out March 5th. There's a little bit of a plug there. March 5th. <laughs> 2010. So when we start off, well, actually, I'm going to ask Mark to kind of kick it off. One, we're here at Sundance. Mark's movie premieres Tuesday night, right? Uh, Tuesday evening, so uh, 9.30 at the Eccles Cinema. Okay, get the plug in there. So if you're into 3D, you're here on Tuesday, you want to see. It's the only 3D film uh, yes, this year here sure. at, the, at the Sundance this year. So if you're into 3D, you got to go see it. But Mark, what I want to you to talk about a little bit about the storytelling piece. Because you, you did a little bit of a plug in your introduction about how important three, you chose 3D because you like it. But talk about it from the standpoint of how 3D plays in the storytelling. Well, I think, I mean, the reason, well, I make films about animals. And animals can't talk for themselves. So way back when I started, first started making films about animals, I really wanted to make these films from the point of view of the animal, the subjectivity of the animal. 
And so in other words, uh, I really wanted to feel like you were down on the ground with the animal. I wanted to be immersed in the animal's world. I didn't want to make a, a traditional sort of film where often uh, a camera is looking down on an animal, what have you, from a, a human perspective, I wanted to go to an animal to animal perspective, and that, and that suited the filmmaking. With this new project, uh, we had the opportunity to go 3D, and the reason we went 3D was it really suited the subject matter and the content of the film. So in other words, it allowed us not so much to play with 3D gimmicks of things coming towards you and what have you, it allowed us to be immersed in the world of the, our animal, our subject animal, which was the cane toad. So, to, so the, 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 the 3D absolutely suited the nature of the film. So Steve, you kind of have a different challenge on storytelling from the standpoint of a bunch of guys running up and down a basketball court. So talk about you know, the, the role from the standpoint of how you got, because you, you know, the NBA's been the leaders in thinking about live action sports in the form of 3D. Yeah. Um, if you, um, certainly the economics tell you that the best seat at an NBA game is the courtside seat. So sitting in a courtside seat, it's, a, it's kind of a transformative experience because you really realize how fast and athletic you know, uh, these guys are. Because you know, the main camera of a, of, a, of a standard telecast kind of slows them down with the movement back and forth of the camera. You're kind of lulled to sleep. You just don't know, realize how explosive uh, LeBron is or, 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 or Michael Jordan. Um, so really, when we got involved in 3D, it was to say, how can we bring that experience to the widest possible audience? Now, the other thing that it allows you to do is to choose within the picture what you want to look at, right? In other words, the director isn't always telling you what to look like, uh, what to look at. Um, so we're still in actually transforming from SD to HD because when you direct a game, right, you're still thinking about the SD, SD consumer, but you've got the HD picture, right? But in 3D, you're fully released to let people's eyes wander. wander. So um, I'll give you like an example. One of the great things about having watched Michael Jordan play that we didn't capture and, and, and we won't be able to go back to was the defense that he played. He was probably the, one of the great, he was the greatest defensive player that ever played basketball. You can't see that in the old SD productions, right? But now capturing in 3D, you would be able to go back and, and actually focus on a particular athlete. You can choose what to watch, right? So, so we're having to retrain the cameramen. Normally the cameramen are thinking, I am, I am telling a story with the director. So I'm listening to the director. I'm getting shots for the director. I'm, I'm picking off heads. I'm, I'm going to the bench. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. It's like in 3D, it's like, whoa. You gotta slow down. You gotta open up the frame because the, the, the viewer can now make the choice as to whether they wanna watch the bench or you know, whether they wanna watch the player going to the basket. There's, the viewer can pick out different things in the picture. So, Phil, one of the things that, uh, you know, from the standpoint of DreamWorks has announced that all of their movie productions are in 3D and has been since Monsters vs. Aliens, right? So talk about, from the standpoint of, you know, there's been a lot of talk about 2D movies being converted into 3D, but you have to think differently when you do 3D from the beginning, and how do you think about 3D in the storytelling? That's right. First, the mic test. Are we doing better this time? Yes. yes? No? Yeah. Okay, so I, I sketched down a couple of notes because I wanted to, let's just think what is filmmaking? for a moment, and to me, I'll say traditional filmmaking just to be clear from 3D for a moment, but filmmaking is the 3D to 2D conversion process. I mean, real life is 3D, filmmaking has been generally 2D. And so filmmakers and directors especially, DPs, are actually experts at 2D from 3D. And so 